Lucky! Pearls. You took something that belongs to me, Bucky. It's nothing personal. He was told to. Just following orders. Put your guns on the table, Bucky, you and your friends. Look at Pearls. I've got no quarrel with you. We nearly growed up together. I'd appreciate it if you'd come in under this shelter or move on down the stream. You're making a lot of noise out there and you're making me nervous and I can't even play my harp now. Come on in here. Put one foot in front of the other. Lower that rifle. Come on in here and set. My stars and garters. You ain't nothing but a boy. Ha, you're soaking wet. Sit down here and wrap yourself up in some of these hides. You ain't gonna shoot me, are you? Put that gun down. Get yourself warm and dry. Here, boy, have some of this hot coffee and maybe thaw you out a little bit. <laughs> I never been around nobody that's touched before. What's done? You ain't got enough sense to come in out of the rain. <laughs> Lucky thing you run into me. Ordinarily, I'm out there on that river. Storm being like it is, I thought it was a good idea to pull this boat and tip it upside down and get the rain off of me. I'm kind of glad you come along. You feel better now? You know, there's a couple of reasons a man like me asked a fellow like you in out of the rain. I wouldn't want to see you get the deep cough and stand out there and die, and maybe in the morning you'd help me put my boat back in the water. It's a hard job for one man, I know that, you see, because I brought it up here myself. <laughs> You're touched. 
I ain't never been around nobody that was touched before. It was the kid. She said he was carrying that fancy handled rifle. He's got a good three hours on us. Deputize my men, as many as you may need. You want them dead or alive? I want them dead. But don't shoot him in the face. I want to see that it's him. Get a poster out by morning all over the valley. Dead. You heard the man. What do we do with their horses? Get them back to Mr. Logan's ranch. Get out. Get out! Your son's in there, Mr. Logan. He won't feel anything. Well, there then. That's it. Can I go with you? Well, I'll be damned. It talks. I'm asking if I can go with you, mister. I'm answering you. No, sir, you can't. Listen, I need to get out of this valley. Now, if I went with you, it'd be easier for me. It's going to be easier for you, too. You see, I could help you. <laughs> could you? <laughs> well, thanks for the offer. But no thanks. Last night, you wouldn't make a peep, and today, you won't shut up. I wouldn't be no hindrance. I appreciate the offer, son, but the answer's no. <laughs> I wouldn't be no trouble, mister. Touched. up ahead, mister, about a half a mile with men on it. Now, I'm going to be under here, okay, with some of these hides pulled over me. And we're going to go through there, and no one's going to know I'm here. Oh, so then you wouldn't want me to say nothing to him. That's right, because this is about head level on you all the time. This horse up here, you just going to float away and leave this good horse? If you so much as frown at those men on the bridge, mister, I swear. Well, I'll just keep smiling then. How about that? Chester. Nope, I ain't seen him. You sure? 
Like I said, I ain't seen him. Besides, I'd never forget a fellow with a face that ugly. <laughs> Good day to you, sir. You can come out now. Is there anybody around? I said you can come out. There's nobody around. Hey, is there any more bridges for nightfall? Nearest bridge is a day and a half downstream. Does this mean you're coming with me? And I guess this time you're telling me you're not asking me. I guess I'll just play my mouth harp. I guess, I guess I won't play my mouth. Say, what's the route of this river, old man? Where's it go? Let's have a look. Put it out! Well, I can't see you without it. Put that thing out! There's people on the shore. They're gonna see it, mister. <laughs> Someone on this boat can't read the map without it. Gee. Well, would you hurry up, Dan? Well, we go downstream about a mile, come to a big bend, then she splits in two. North Fork's the Green River. The other's the Blood River. Well, what's the fastest way out of this valley? Blood River. Is there any towns or bridges? Lots of them. Lots of people. But that's the way we're going, even if she runs right through the center of the saloon. You're going where I tell you to. Now put that light out. You don't need no maps anyway. You know these rivers better than the fish themselves. Son, you can't go by the river anyway. Everybody in this valley's on to you. Don't matter which way you go, they're gonna snare you. All right. All right, pull this thing over. I said pull this thing over to shore, now. Aye, aye, Captain. Now, you just stay on the river, old man, and mind your own business. Now, if anyone asks you, you ain't never seen me, you ain't never heard of me, no one like me. Why don't you just kill me? I mean, why don't you just raise up that gold rifle of yours and... Shut up! Shut up. You don't even carry a gun, do you? Oh, I got guns. Sure, I got guns. I got a couple of scatter guns, and then... I always got this gun with me. For hunting purposes, you know. You could have shot me whenever you wanted to. Oh. I got no reason to shoot you. I'm just a peaceable old man floating down this river, living the good life. I ain't looking for trouble.
Uh, no money, no liquor, no guns. I, I, I ain't got nothing. Except my horse. Well, it ain't your horse. I know my own horse, mister. I'm sorry I had to rough you up. But I want my horse back, mister. Ain't your horse. Listen, we just went through this. It is my horse. I left him by the river yesterday. If you left him, he isn't your horse. He's mine now. But he's for sale. You want me to buy my own horse? How much? Fifty dollars. No, it's fifteen. Well, that ain't enough. Uh, but for another ten, I'll throw in the saddle. Yeah, well, this will have to do. Thanks. Pleasure doing business with you. Mr. Pearls! Teach him a lesson! He tried to kill me! Yo, yo, I want to see you bury that kid! Sorry. Good afternoon. Afternoon. I'm Winston Patrick Culler. I'm Jake. Hello, Jake. So you got that young desperado pinned up in there, have you? Snared up like a rabbit. So you'll just wait him out, huh? 
Just until dark. Then what will you do? Will you take him alive, Jake? Don't want him alive. You know, you're a nosy old buckskin, asking all these questions. Just who are you? Well, like I said, Winston Patrick Culler. I thought maybe you fellows might need some help with that desperado. What's his name? Pearls? Uh-huh. Well, we don't need your help, old man. We got him and the reward. So when the action starts, you just step back out of the way. I'll do that, sir. Good luck to you. That's the way of it. Man gets a little long a tooth and nobody needs his help anymore. Keep your heads down, boys! Open the door! Open the door! He stole my horse! Shoot him! You crazy old man! Open the door! fellas out there trying to kill you. Yeah, I never thought I'd get a trial, mister. How'd you find this place? Look. Well, you call it what you will. I'd call it something else. They turned this whole valley upside down looking for me, mister. Who the blazes are they, anyway? Uh, they're the law. And they want me dead. How come? Didn't you see that wanted post, you stupid old coot? You do have a way with you. Especially with the fellas in here, trying to save your life. Hey, listen, I didn't ask you to come in here, mister. You came in here on your own free will. Plus, I don't need your help, all right? I can take care of myself just fine. Oh, hell, I can. I can sure see that. That's enough! Stop wasting ammunition! What are we gonna do now? Logan already's asking why it's taking so long. Well, we got us one young rabbit and one old rabbit. Just relax. It'll be dark soon. Eat your fill there, young man. You're gonna need your strength before this night's over. Promise you that. Mister, there's something that doesn't quite add up. I don't want a straight answer. What's that? Why are you helping me? Because <laughs> you need help, that's why. Well, then why didn't you help me yesterday? Well, see, yesterday I kind of misjudged you. Yesterday I thought you could take care of yourself. Well, now, since you're taking care of everything for me, mister, how long do you think we should stay in here? Well, I'll tell you. We're going to stay in here till we figure a way out or till them fellas come and kill us. Well, you are going to figure something out, right? I'm working on it. That was the first time you ever killed anybody, wasn't it? What makes you so sure I ain't killed no one else before, mister? Well, I got this deep burning sense about things like that. And you call me touched. Living alone has pushed you over the edge, old man. See, you're not evil. You're scared to death, but you're not evil. See, you've been shooting out that window for half an hour, and you ain't killed anybody. You don't want to kill anybody. You just ain't evil, kid. I ain't never known no insane river derelicts before. <laughs> insane river derelict, huh? Well, this conversation is plumb dried up. Time we got the heck out of here. If you knew anything, you'd know we have to wait till nightfall. No, sir. You see, that's what they're doing. Hey, squints. You're killing the grass. Ray? <laughs> <laughs> Wait, you Get him more, kid! That old fool! Shoot ya! That's my horse! Get over here! Get him! Get him! Get him! Come on, man up! Get him! Get him! Get him! Oh! 
that one up myself. Kind of a spur of the moment kind of thing. Now would you please tell me what we're gonna do? They're gonna be coming back here as soon as they find a horse. I know. And they'll go upstream looking and downstream looking and upstream and down again. And by the time they get here, we can hit the river. We can't go by the river. You said so yourself. Well, I changed my mind. There ain't no other way. We're like sitting ducks on that river. Well, we may make it if we travel at night. We better get. Hey, what is this we, us, and our stuff? Why aren't you helping me, mister? Look, first you want to get out of this valley on my boat, then you don't. Now, which is it? I just don't like this interference. <laughs> interference? Honey boy, I saved your life. Come on. All right. All right, I'm coming with you. Now, look, you're coming with me. We better get some sleep. Sleep? It's the daytime. I know. And we're traveling by night. You know, it's a full-time job just keeping up with the way you think, old man. Sleep. Where are we going to sleep anyway? Let that little pissant get away, eh? Well, we had it. Mm -hmm. It wasn't that we didn't track him. I'm telling you, we had him. Had his past tense. Well, this rasty old buckskin came riding in, name of Culpepper. Culpepper. So, well, yeah, and anyway, he, he got the kid out of there. Wasn't so rasty then, was he? You know, I'd like permission to head up this next search party myself, because I know them two are out there in the woods afoot. You wouldn't know it if a bear married your sister. I want this valley sealed up tight. Set up a camp by the river border. Pearls gets out of this valley. He's gone for good. Here you are, Mr. Logan. Give us another chance at it. That $2,000 reward's still mighty tasty. Wouldn't make any difference if I made it $20,000. None of you would collect it. It's an old story. You want something done, you do it yourself. Saddle him up. I'll lead this posse myself. You heard him, man. Well, one thing's for sure. Pearls and that old buckskin would have been a lot better off dying in that boathouse. I'd like to hear about it. What? I say I'd like to hear about it. About what? About how you killed that boy. I killed three of them. Well, then I'd like to hear about how you killed three of them. Why didn't you ask me before? Well, see, before I didn't have a burning desire to know. Now I do. My mom and pa owned a little ranch up on Reed Flats. They came on it 30 years ago when it was a pile of chokeweeds. They was fresh out of St. Louis. They built it into a proper homestead, too. House and garden. My daddy, he gave me this. Carved it all by himself. It matched the one his pa carved him. He said it was good as giving me his name. Nobody could ever give me nothing better, mister. The only problem was, I wasn't meant to be a farmer. I was always looking for excitement, and my daddy used to say I'm like this wild stag there. 
so I'm setting you free. So I left them. I started roaming around, cowboying when I could. Before I know it, a few years went by, so I sent a telegram home. But I didn't get an answer. So I started going home. See, Henry Logan, he bought up all the other farms and ranches in Warbonnet Valley. He wanted to buy my pa's place for a long time, but he wouldn't sell it to him. See, it was all we ever had, mister. It's all we ever wanted to own. So Logan sent his son, and he sent two other men to visit them one night. And when I got home, I found my house burned down. And I found my parents' bones in the ashes, mister. I'm sorry. Well, there's only one thing I'm sorry about. I wish it had been Mr. Logan himself instead of his boy that I killed. I know. Take some men back up river. The rest of you follow me. All right, you heard him. Let's go. What was the fellow on the big white horse? That was Logan himself. Want you pretty bad, don't they, kid? They'll crisscross this river all day. They ain't gonna be safe here. I'm sure you got something up your sleeve. As a matter of fact, I do. I got an old friend. Lives just off the river. We can hide out there for the day. Yeah. Friends are nice to have, especially when you need one. Well. We got to appeal to his better nature. So try not to insult him right away. I'll do my best. What's it, I think? Neoma, color. You got the attack? No. I call in the Wenatchee. You lie, color. You know I don't lie. Come in, then. Oh, smiling knife. Been too long since we smoked. We have never smoked together. You calling the Wenatchee for serious? I'm dead serious. Anything to get free. Your hut. We need to rest in your hut. How long? Till sundown. You can sleep in a hut, sundown. You leave. Debt paid. Kid, put the gun down. You ain't gonna shoot nobody in here. Go to sleep. You're keeping me awake. I can't sleep, mister. Why not? I don't know. I can't quit thinking about gunning down those three men. Did you tell me they drew on you first? Yeah. Well, then, it's self-defense, isn't it? <clears throat> I guess. But it still don't feel right. Yeah, I know. How can you possibly know what I'm feeling, mister? Well, I'll tell you, kid. I don't know you well enough to bear my immortal soul at this time. But you're not the only one who knows what it feels like to kill somebody for revenge. 
you're right. I don't feel good. And I don't bring nobody back. But I know about one son of a bitch that ain't gonna kill nobody else's pretty little Indian wife. Go to sleep, kid. Go to sleep. I think you did live with Indians, Color. Yeah? But there's something about you that just doesn't add up to me. What's that? Well, you shoot a darn good rifle. You ride a horse pretty good for an old man. Well, thank you very much. And you track like an Indian. So what the heck are you doing out here besides floating down the river collecting debts from smiling Indians? Well, I'll tell you, kid, I don't know what that has to do with anything, but before I met you, I run into this preacher on the river. He told me about this cove downstream, a little church there and a big graveyard outside. Inside's one of them organs, you know, the kind with pipes? Pipes? Yep, pipes. Some time ago, a little oriental lotus blossom taught me a song. She didn't know the name of it. But when I get to that church, kid, I'm going to play that song on that organ. It's the last thing I do. Well, now I know you're running me through the woods, mister, okay? That's too hard to believe. Why? Because only people who are cultivated can play pipe organs. You have this way, kid, you insult a man. And right after he's opened up to you. Beethoven. Stone deaf, you know. <laughs> kind of like you. Great Bend Bridge. Five miles to town from here. Get some food there. We're about out. I'm running low on bullets. How you think? Oh, I... I got six left in my pistol and a couple left in my repeater. Well... I guess her best chance is to wait till nightfall and go in and load up on food and shells and try to get back to this river before daybreak. Well, just how are you figuring on doing that? Damn if I know. Well, I bet you they'd never suspect us sauntering right into town in broad daylight, mister. We're not going to do that, kid. I got plans for the future. Now, don't bring that rifle. We're going to have a tough enough time sneaking in and out of that town. Cover it up with them hides and let's make a move. Come on. Any time. Okay, kid. You stay right here till dark. Then go get the food. I'll take care of the ammo. Well, you're talking about stealing the food, right? I should want to buy it. You got any money? Well, why do I have to get the food? Oh, I just thought you should. No, oh, I want to get the ammo. What's the difference, kid? The ammo is much more important. All right. Than... I'll get the food. Now, the gun shops 
right down the street. Okay, so, so what do you need? I need some buckshot and some flints and some hard-nosed 44s. Lots of them. Okay, we'll meet back here. No, no. There's an alley right behind the gun shop. You get what you need and wait for me there. Hey, it's not dark yet. I know. And my face is not on any wanted posters. So I don't know why I'm flopping around there like a trout on my way in here. I can walk through this town any time I want. I feel like a beached whale. Hey, do you mind getting the food? You're barking. Evening. Good evening. You're you're him. No, you got me mistaken for someone else, Mister. No, you are. I'm sure of it. You're Jimmy Pearls. You are. You're worth two thousand dollars. That's what I call a lot of... Oh. What's wrong down there? I'm just playing leapfrog over here. Keep quiet now. Shut that dog up. Good night. Do you want to go to dog heaven? Shut up. Color. I'll go around the side. Come on. Color, where are you? There he is. Watch out. Right there. Hit my shit, Eddie. There's a storm. Back off. I can't load this thing. I asked you to be quiet. <laughs> Kid. There he is! In the alley! What are you doing? They're trying to kill me! 
Did you get the ammunition? I dropped them. I knew I should have sent you for the food. Back, back. The money's mine. Break your jaw. Go get the food, kid. Go on. Mr. Logan, this is Mr. Randall. Randall, this better be good. It is.
<laughs> Rough and gentle at the same time, just like always. You need a manicure. Manicure? Mm -hmm. I wish I could. Oh, now? Haven't I been treating you right? Georgina! Oh. Come out nice and slow. Palms up. It's me. Color, it's me. Oh. Well, then, come on in here. Well, I just don't want this woman to shoot me. Put the gun away, ma'am. This is him? I'm afraid so. Well, you ought to teach him some manners. Like how to knock on a door. Might save his life. My darling, I'm afraid it wouldn't work. He don't take no directions from me. What are you doing here? Can't you see? I'm gathering information. In the middle of a... Of a boarding house, my boy. You sure get her out for an old river out, mister. It was his choice of words that first drew me to him. And being upwards in age like you are, I didn't think you, you could know someone like this. Huh. It's a pleasure to feel a man withdraw the gratitude and <laughs> plunge in the knife. Mr. Pearls, this is Laurie. Is there anything she can do to uh, put you more at ease? You can go watch out that window for me. Stand guard. I'll watch out this one. <laughs> it gets all business. We do go back a long time, don't we, Winston? We do. Riders are coming. Yeah, it's Logan. He's got an army with him, too. Put the rifle down, kid. we get all these ladies killed. Now, listen. Get out the back. Get my clothes off the line. Head for the river. Wait for me there. I'll be along. Well, I hate to leave a man with his pants down. Get! They got here a lot sooner than you thought. They did. Ladies, can you find me something to wear? Go to the spares closet, quick. The rest of you, you get dressed. It's business as usual. To check the woodshed. Stay awake. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, Georgina. Oh, it's been a long time, Mr. Logan. Mm -hmm. You have quite a battalion with you out there. Hello, Sheriff. Oh, yeah. <laughs> You'd uh, given me more notice, I could have been prepared. The only thing I want now is him. I've never seen him before. I have information that he's headed here with an old trapper. Thanks for the bath. Makes a man feel spiritual. Hold on. You're not going anywhere. You mind, sir? Anybody else here? No. Are you sure? There's one thing I'm always sure of, Mr. Logan. That's when there's a man in my house. Search the house. And uh, who are you? Dick Calhoun. I, uh, I'm a musician. I play the piano for my meals and my baths and my entertainment. Hey, would, you, would you play now? Well, sure. I'd be more than happy to, sir. Mm. 
An old camp town racetrack five mile long. Do da, do da. The camp town ladies sing this song. Oh, good old day. All right. Wanna run all, right, all night. Wanna <laughs> run all day. I bet my money on the buffalo. Have you seen night. him? No. Somebody I told he'd be here. Day. I ain't ever laid eyes on him. Ooh, you have never even know. looked at the poster. Like I said, mister, I ain't seen him. See, <laughs> for the last day and a half, I've had my eyes full of these ladies. Every single one of them. Just who in the hell are you, mister? Like I said, I'm Dick Calhoun. I play the piano. Maybe I'm not satisfied. What a pity. Ladies, the man in your place here is not satisfied. Nobody in the house but women, Mr. Logan. You sure? I'm positive. Call Jake. Yes, sir. Well, I'd like to stay and visit, but I'm late for an engagement in Russellville. You'll excuse me. Did you find anything? Mr. Logan wants to see you. Goodbye, my love. You take care of yourself, Mr. Calhoun. I always do. I hope I get the chance to entertain you someday. Could be. Please? Who is that? He's a music man. Come on, kid. It's me. Come on, we got a lot of hauling to do. Sorry, I couldn't help you, Mr. Logan. One way or the other. Where'd you get that? Oh, back. There's nothing in it, I checked. Belongs to Culpepper! The fellow that's been riding with pearls. Yeah, that's his, all right. Disappointed in you, Georgina. Where did they go? I let you stay in business all these years. Nobody's bothered you or your operation. Now, is it too much to ask for some information? Hmm? Where they go? I told you to tell him, darling. I did. I said you were floating down the river. Well, then why? Why this? My own fault. I stalled. I wanted to give you more time. You didn't take too kindly to that. I'm so sorry. You better get out of here. They think you're on the river, but they're all over the valley. We'll go. But you get better. Now you heal your pretty face. You know, you still owe me a manicure. I'll see you soon. You get her to a doctor.
I really messed up by dropping that jacket, didn't I? Yep. How much further? Just a little ways. All right, put her down here. We're there. Where are we? Well, we're out of that valley. Then I made it, mister. I'm free. All Logan sheriffs and deputies and judges, they can't touch me right here. Ha, oh, you hear that, Logan? I'm free, you dirty pig. I'm free. <laughs> I guess by rights you are, but there's no border going to stop Mr. Logan. That is his only son you killed. You did it, mister. I don't care. I can't believe it. You got me out of the valley. What now? Well, I don't know. I'll keep heading south, I guess, until I don't feel Logan breathing down my back. And you? I've got to go back upstream. I got some unfinished business. You look after yourself. Watch your top knot. I might like some company. I was hoping you'd think that. I figured out why you came back. That right? Yeah, it's a little matter of beating up women. So that's Logan's camp, huh? That's it, my boy. He set her up here because he didn't want you to get out of this valley alive. I thought you didn't know anything about Logan. Logic. You gotta watch. Yeah. Now, for the big one. Can you tell time? Yes. Good. It's gonna be, Jake. Don't rush me, don't rush me. There, I don't know what you're so proud of. Hell is cold out there. All right, I'll call you. Colder than a toilet that? seat in a Klondike. I raise you, Jake. Oh. Jake! Oh, oh. oh my God! John! All right, get him up, and don't do nothing foolish, boys. How'd you get past the guard, Culpepper? Providence. Culpepper? In the flesh. That's Calhoun, the traveling musician. That's Culpepper. Now, where's this Logan fella? Which tent's he in? That one over there. Why'd you tell him? Look at his arm shaking. Shake? Tie him up. Tight. Easy boy. Easy boy. Shh. 
Easy, boy. Mr. Logan ain't gonna like this. And I ain't gonna forget it, neither. I hope you don't. And you tell him. He can find me and the young Pearls boy at the church by Blood River. And when he finds you, have him see to him. And Sheriff, one peep out of you and you're a dead man. That's where I quit you. What, are you just gonna leave me like that? Well, you're going south, and I gotta get back to the river. I'm going downstream to that old church I told you about. Yeah? Well, what should I do with this horse? Keep him. No need to be in a foot. Well, that's stealing, mister. No, that's the spoils of war. Keep the horse. So I guess you don't want me around no more, huh? That ain't it, kid. When I threw in with you, it's kind of like grabbing an iron by the hot end. Now, am I beholden to you for anything else? Listen, you were never beholden to me for anything, mister. Good luck. Yeah, good luck to you too, mister. We used an old Indian carry. Well, then your experience did come in handy, Marshal Cole. It sure did. Marshal Culler? Now, put that gun away. There'll be no bloodshed in this parsonage. All right. That's Mr. Pearls. Mr. Pearls, I'm Congressman Howard K. Adams from Washington, D.C. Marshal Culler? United States Marshal Winston Patrick Culler. And this is Parson Carpenter and Mrs. Carpenter. Want some breakfast, son? He looks tired. What he needs is a warm bath and a little bed rest. Thank you, ma'am. Well, I spent the best part of last night trying to figure things out, mister. And now that badge clears everything up for me. You mean you never told him? Now, if I'd have told him, do you think he'd be standing down there looking at me like that? Then there's something you should know, Mr. Pearls. 
For years, I have worked to get enough evidence to run Henry Logan out of the Montana Territory. But no judge in the Territory will prosecute him. He owns them all. So I sent Marshal Culler from Nevada City. Now, he's been working incognito, trying to get Logan out of the Territory long enough for us to arrest him. And I was your bait, wasn't I? You just kept dangling me in front of him, showing me to him, right? In the town and at that, uh... Boarding house. Yeah, even at Logan's camp. You used me, mister, to leave a trail a blind man could follow. You kept me going with your mule pumping lies. You know that? You could have got me killed. No, 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 no. You'll get yourself killed. I'm the one got you out of that valley, if you think back. Yeah, it's not the same thing, because all along you were trying to do something else. Well... You might say our meeting each other on the river was rather serendipitous. You know you should have told me. What's the difference? I mean, you're out of there now, and what's the difference? Which reminds me, gentlemen, we got things to do and places to go. No hard feelings? No, no hard feelings. One can never spot ill temper churning inside a man. Well, that bed sounds great, man. Give me a hand there. Gave you a run for your money, didn't I, Logan? You had no right to kill my boy. I didn't kill your boy, Logan. You did. So you sent Bucky to kill my mom and pa. No right. And now you don't have that old man to help you. You're all alone. And for what you did to my boy, I'm going to take the top of your head off. Get in there. gun belt and leave it on the bench, Culpepper. 
Let's go. Well, Jake. Something's up. Hate it to interrupt your performance, Marshal. Just glad I got to entertain you a little. I know it's nothing like beating up women and stuff. Oh, really? That was, uh, wasn't bad for a tin star. I'm glad you enjoyed it. How about a dance? A dance? You know, I never did learn to dance. Nothing to it. The rope around your neck. Mr. Logan, that's harsh talk for a man standing on hallowed ground. Amen, Marshal Culler. Look around. There's 30 of them. They got guns pointed right at you. You make one move, we'll take the top of your head off. You did it to me again. Be still, kid. Mister, I end up like a piece of bait for you all the time. I'm like this little worm squirming on your hook. I'm getting sick of it. What's it going to be, Logan? You feel lucky? Maybe I don't think these are such bad odds. You ain't got a chance in hell. I'm sorry, ma'am. Marshal, you promised there'd be no bloodshed. Parson, you take that woman and step back inside the house. Now, I want everyone to just put their guns down! Ah! No! Get down! Burn hell, Logan. Where's the stairs go? Up to the bell tower. Uh, uh, uh. There's only one way out of there, Logan. That's by me. I'm gonna be a lot nicer to you if you come now. Tell her. Tell her to open the door. Open up, Carl! Carl, open up! I can help you! Don't be an old fool, Carl! By golly, I think he's out of bullets. Car, open up! Are you out of bullets, Mr. Logan? It's a very dangerous assumption, Marshal. I'm going to make it. Good to go, man, Luke. All right. All right, all right, you win. I'm hit. Don't move a muscle. See? I ain't out of bullets. Let's go! Now, put your gun down there. Put it down. 
Never thought, never thought I'd get undone by a traveling musician. Take it right over here, sir. Don't you look down? I mean, it helps if if you can see what's coming. Marshall Color. Can you help me here? Yeah. Yeah, well, just wait a sec. Why'd you lock that steer wheel door on me, mister? It took me a few minutes to bust it down. I didn't want you to mess things up anymore. Can you help me? You pick a heck of a time to compliment a man. Okay. Can you reach my arm? No, I can't let go if I do a fall. Well, you gotta help me here. Swing your legs up over that eave. Swing them up. Uh, uh, I can't, kid. It won't work. Can you help me? Why should I put my neck out for you anyway, mister? After all you've done to me. I'm gonna break my neck. Well, you lived with the Indians, right? What would they tell you about a situation like this? Flap your arms and fly like an eagle? Are you looking for an apology? Oh. <laughs> Bye, color. I thought I'd see him speechless. Hey, mister, wait a minute. Wait a minute, where are you going? Well, hiya, kid. Where you going, mister? Going Georgina's. Going to get a bath and a shave, maybe. Maybe get my fingernails looked after. By the way, kid, <laughs> how's your fingernails? They're just fine, thank you very much. I don't need nobody messing with my dang fingernails, mister. If you decide, it's free country. But once in a while, the gentle touch of a woman helps soothe the savage beast within a man. <sighs> yeah, 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 anyway, where are you going after Georgina's? I'm going home. Got a little place in the hills up above Snake River. Well, I suppose you got all the help you need up there, huh? Oh. Once in a while, I need a feller to do the milking, grease the windmills, or make jerky. Dang it, Color. I was offering you my help. But well, listen to me, I don't milk no cows, and I don't grease windmills, and I don't jerk beef. If I can't do it on horseback, mister, I don't do it. 
I'm a cowboy. Well, you suit yourself, kid. It's a free country. Come on, Brownie.